Hello everyone, welcome back to the Midwest Stitches YouTube channel. My name is Danielle and this is my channel where I talk about all of my crafty things, uh, knitting, crocheting, sewing, or anything else I might get up to. So today is Friday, May 31st, and uh, there is so much to talk about because it's been a couple, couple of weeks and I was actually sick not this week, but the last two weeks before that, I got like a horrible cold, allergies, <laughs> something along those lines. Um, I'm not really sure what, but I was super congested. So I thought I would spare you guys having to listen to me sound like Fran Drescher from The Nanny. <laughs> so I decided to wait and there's a lot to catch you up on. So, uh, grab your drink. I'm using my new mug that I got from the Crazy Sock Lady shop. So this is the Summer Sock Camp logo for this year. And then on the other side, I got Team Cuff Down printed on it. So I love that about Spreadshirt is um, like her shop, she has multiple designs and you can add whatever you want to a shirt or a mug or whatever and you can if there's an option to do two prints you can do two prints they do charge you a couple of extra dollars but I feel like it's worth it so I didn't have to buy two mugs and I like um, having a print on each mug whether it's the same print on both sides or one or the other but um, I love that I have a team cuff down and it's a uh, the new summer sock camp logo so so grab your drink this could be a lengthy episode all right let's get into everything First off, you can find me on Instagram at midwest.stitches or on my website at midweststitches.com. And you can find my project pages on Ravelry uh, at Midwest Stitches. Okay. Um, we'll start with finished objects. I don't even know where to start. Like, first of all, let's talk about what you might see in the background. We are still working on our bathroom renovation. So maybe a little bit of life stuff first. I was sick. Uh, <laughs> Um, bathroom renovation, we're almost done tearing everything out and we did find mold. Uh, the floor underneath the shower base was basically rotten. I'm surprised that because it was concrete that I hadn't fallen through the ceiling. Uh, so thank God for that. But, uh, so we're working on that, trying to get that done. And it's just, you know, when you do things yourself, it's a long process and it's just, having patience and just going with the flow. So with all of that, my background that like this is driving me crazy. This, the loft up here where I'm sitting, um, behind me, maybe my head is covering some of it, but, uh, there are bins filled with all of the stuff that was in the bathroom, just kind of hanging out because there's really no other place to put it or it's stuff that I might need. And I don't want to like, put it down in the basement or on a shelf somewhere where I can't get to it. Uh, so it's just hanging out in, cause this is my closet area. <clears throat> so it's just hanging out with my clothes. So that's super fun. And, uh, here off to the side and on my table, I've been cutting fabric for new bags that I'm going to start sewing up. And so everything's just a big giant mess in here. Uh, taking a deep breath, taking lots of deep breaths. Just, it's fine. Uh, we've, we, I, sh I should say me, Adrian has not accepted it that while we were doing this bathroom renovation, uh, everything will be messy around the house. Everything will be chaotic because, um, there's just a lot of moving parts. Uh, I have a toilet sitting in our living room. <laughs> I don't know if I talked about that the last time, but I ordered some of the things for the renovation. And of course, because we don't have anything ready to put in yet, um, you know, I just went ahead and ordered some of the stuff that I knew that I wanted. And so like the toilet, for example, that came really quick along with the new shower pans. So those are just sitting in our living room and the toilet of course is out of the box. So, you know, we're looking very redneck, uh, with a toilet in the middle of our living room. It, it's, it feels very, you know, uh, Christmas vacation ish. <laughs> so, oh, it's just going to be messy until we're done. That's, just, I just have to accept that and move on. Things might be a little bit rusty with this episode. You know, I'll try to edit out what I 
you know, feel a little cringy about. So anyway, first uh, finished object that we'll start with from the last time is these socks. Uh, I was working on these the last time. This is the second pair that I did. Uh, this is the main color is Lofty Loops Yarn in Christmas Cheer. This was from 2020, I believe. It was like 2020 Christmas Cheer. I think it was the main skein from her advent calendar that she sold, you know, extras after the fact. Um, and then I did the toes on these in a different color because I knew I wasn't going to have enough yarn, even though I made the legs uh, shorter than I did the last pair. Um, I did run out of yarn on the first sock for this. So this yarn, I thought it went very well. So this is, um, uh, Forbidden Fiber Co. in the Rockefeller Christmas tree colorway. And I bought this skein, I think the same year I bought this Christmas cheer. So I've had it for a long time and I just, I looked for something in my stash that was a similar base because this is an 80-20, this was an 85-15, so I thought, you know, they'd be similar, and it worked out perfect. So these are ready for the Christmas bag, and um, I knit these the same way that I did the last pair I talked about on a 3.75 millimeter needle, because this yarn gives me a worsted weight gauge according to my... Um, yarn weight gauge thing I showed the last time. So that's why I did that. And these were 40 stitches. My next pair I had started the last time and I could not be happier with these. Like I am so in love with them. They just, they turned out so good. Uh, they are my Mermazing socks. I love this yarn so much. Like this is just I love these colors. I do. I just look at them. They're just gorgeous. The purples and the teals and aquas. I mean, it's just amazing. So these are obviously for me and now I can wear them. We've had a few cooler days. I don't know if this is everywhere, but here in Nebraska, we've had a lot of storms, a lot of rain, a lot of freaking tornadoes. Uh, if you don't watch the news, where we are, we have not had any, knock on wood, uh, <laughs> none have come our direction, but we have had some folks here that uh, were not so fortunate. So yeah, it was it was pretty, pretty devastating on, um, uh, there was an Arbor Day tornado that was at the end of April um, north of us. So anyway, that's, those are mine. 2.0 or two millimeter needles, uh, 64 stitches is what I do for myself. Um, same as always with the shorty pattern. Um, my, uh, let's see which one of the, I think I finished these. <laughs> I can't remember which order I finished these next two pairs in. So I'll just show these ones first. So these are another shorty pair for me. And this is called April showers from granite state yarns. And I had showed this yarn in the cake, I think, and I was really excited because it had these pops of orange and just um, very pretty colors. So these are knit the exact same way, same needles, same stitch count. And I, this was a 100 gram uh, skein, so I split the cake. I have 50 grams left, and I'm gonna talk about a different plan for what I might do with my full skeins where I make um, shorties for me and then uh, have half a cake left. I have a new project I started, which might really help eat up a lot of yarn in that case. Okay, my last finished objects are <laughs> Freckled Whimsies uh, first uh, month of the Halloween club that I showed called Halfway to Haunts and I did finish them. So here they are. Oh, that's not a bad, that's not a good way to show them. <laughs> so here they are. They're not matching as you can see. I don't care about that. <laughs> and for these, I did do the heel toe do -si do pattern um, from the Crazy Sock Lady. 
And this is on DK Yarn. So I just modified her stitch counts from the pattern to make it work with DK. And I used 48 stitches for mine. So I just used that stitch count and wrote out the pattern, figured out what I needed to do to alter the stitch count to make it work. I'm not going to share that. I had one person ask me that. And even though they told me that they own the pattern, I don't feel comfortable uh, doing that just because it is a paid for pattern and out of respect for her um, and the work she did on the pattern. I don't want to share that, even though this is a different um, uh, weight yarn, you know, all that stuff. So I won't be doing that. Uh, so I can, I'll only share that I wrote out the pattern repeat on a piece of paper and kind of figured out, you know, this is how many increases or decreases um, that I needed to do or whatever to make it work for this 48 stitch count. So um, there it is. And right here where there's this little tiny stripe, that is because on these I did a shadow wrap heel. And for this shadow wrap heel, it wouldn't have made the two stripes, um, but I use the tutorial that I've talked about before from uh, the Chili Dog on YouTube. It is her modified shadow wrap short row heel. And for that version of the shadow wrap heel, you do two plain rounds in between each half of the heel. And so if you're doing a contrast heel, you can still do it, but you're going to get a stripe um, <laughs> from that yarn. So if that's not the look you're going for, or you're bothered by that, that's definitely not the method for you. I like that method because it gives a very rounded heel shape as opposed to normally these two ends would be kind of pointier on a normal shadow wrap heel. And this version doesn't use, um, triplet stitches, only twin stitches. So from my understanding, um, it's kind of similar to the fish lips kiss heel. I've never done that. I don't own the pattern, so I don't know that for sure. I can't say 100% that that's <laughs> correct. Um, but I wanted to show you what it looks like on the inside. So you can see it's very smooth because of those two rounds. Um, so there's not a huge ridge in between. So it's, it's a very nice method if you're looking and it's quick too. Like once you learn how to do it. It's a very quick method. Um, I did make these for a gift. So these will also go into my, um, gift pile. I was originally intending on making these for me, but then I started knitting them. And then of course I tried them on. Um, and that since this is DK yarn, I've never done a DK shorty sock for myself. And I will say in DK yarn, I don't really care for it because I've knit other DK socks for myself that were a little taller. And if I'm gonna go that route for DK, I prefer longer, a little bit longer. Um, and, oh, I, uh, quick little story, uh, maybe a learning lesson for you because I didn't even think of this. It didn't even occur to me when I started these. So normally when I knit with DK yarn, this is a 75-25 blend. I've only knit vanilla DK socks and I always have used a 2.75 millimeter needle because of my gauge and that's just what works best for what I like. So that's what I started with for these. <laughs> so I get through, I'm using that for the cuff and for everything. And so I get through the heel and I get, you know, maybe 10... 10 rounds after the heel, just enough for there to be a little bit of extra fabric. So I try them on. Oh my goodness. Uh, they were so tight on my foot. Like I couldn't even like, you know, right here where your, your foot bends, I couldn't even really move my foot. And I was like, Oh no. <laughs> so I had to rip them out because with the pattern on the front, I didn't even think how that would tighten up the fabric so much. And so I was, I was like, it's fine. These work up quick. I frogged it and I had to actually order needles. So I went up to, what did I knit these on? Um, I went to a 3.25 for these because of the pattern. So that was a good learning process for me. That just, I've never done a pattern, especially like this for DK socks. So now I know 
you need to go up a needle size if you're going to do a pattern that might make the fabric a little bit tighter on the front or on the back, whatever. Um, so, you know, we're always learning. So anyway, these will go in the gift pile. Uh, and that is all of my finished objects. That's quite a bit, but obviously it's been a few weeks. Okay, works in progress. I actually have quite a bit. I don't know <laughs> what happened to me over the last couple weeks, but it was like I was knitting socks and it's like I had this burst of mojo. So I was knitting all of the socks and just cranking them out. And then I started a couple of new projects and worked on some other projects. And it was just like, I don't know. It just, this burst of creativity. I don't know if it's, you know, because when he's up here working on the bathroom, um, like I can't do any sewing. Uh, or I couldn't at that time because he's like power tools and banging. And I mean, I've got to have headphones on we both too because it's so loud. And so I'm basically trapped downstairs. And the only thing down there is the couch and the TV. So that's pretty much all I, that I can do is do some sort of like handcraft stuff. I can't sew. I can't work on anything extra. So I think that had a lot to do with it <laughs> in that case. Not complaining. I did get a lot of making done. So for works in progress, I only used about 50 grams of the Halloween yarn from Freckled Whimsy. And so I decided to do a little bit of a sock experiment. And this is what I did. So this was the mini that came with it. And for this, you can see there is no heel. It's just ribbing on the back. So this is an idea I got from Kate Celine. She ha always, like, no, she has a, two patterns, I think, that she calls you know, socks with no heels because she doesn't like to knit heels. Uh, so I thought I would try that because I only had 25 grams left or 50 grams. They were split into two of this main yarn. And I had no idea how far that that would take me. And I could have pulled some scraps to do like knit the rest of it with, but I don't have a lot of colors um, unless I just did plain black that would have matched this. So we're going to talk about that in a second. <laughs> so I did this one and I tried this on intending it to be for me. And while this fits really well, I will tell you that this, um, if you're knitting for someone and you don't know their shoe size or, um, like the length of their foot, or you just don't want to be that fussy about it. This is awesome. Like this fits around really well without being like too tight or too loose. However, this was much too short for this style because the back, as you can see, just because of the nature of it, it does slouch a little. So for this style with the ribbing on the back, um, I would recommend a much taller sock, at least to probably here, you know, just so you have enough fabric that they're not going to slide down too much, if at all. So I did this one and then I started the second one and I got through the cuff and started on the leg last night and wasn't even thinking you were supposed to do ripping on the back. <laughs> so I have to take this out. And then I got to thinking because I wanted to gift these. I know a person that these would fit their foot a lot better than mine because their foot is much shorter. But then I got to thinking, well, if I'm going to frog this because I have to, you know, take out the main or the, yeah, the main skein, maybe I should just try and to knit them normal with a heel flap and gusset for her because I've done that before for her and um, if I do run out of yarn, I have some scrap black yarn that I could use to finish off the foot. I think I might be okay, um, doing that for her. So I think I'm gonna have to rip all of this out and then rip out this sock I already finished <laughs> because this is 48 stitches for her foot. She needs 40 stitches for DK. So I'll be doing that. Um, just because they work up so fast and I'm not that worried about, uh, you know, having to do that. I'm not, I'm not fussing about it. Um, you know, with summer sock camp being here and summer in general and, uh, 
you know, I'm kind of tangent, tangenty today. Is that a word? Tangent oriented. <laughs> Work's been kind of stressful uh, for reasons I don't want to talk about or can't talk about, um, won't talk about. <laughs> uh, so I'm just, I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, I'm not going to stress about stuff. I'm not going to put super strict rules on myself. You know, I'm going to do what I can and just go with the flow. Like whatever happens, happens between the bathroom remodel, work being stressful and just life things in general. I'm just like, when it comes to my making, I'm just going to make what I want. I'm not going to put these specific deadlines on myself, whether it's with my shop, my personal making or whatever. I'm just going to do whatever I feel inspired to do that day. If I don't feel like knitting, I'm not going to force myself. Uh, if I want to sew something or maybe cut out some stuff to sew instead, that's just where my mind is right now. So, uh, a little tangent there. So this does not bother me. That's, that's where I was going with that. <laughs> this does not bother me that I finished this and wrote woven the ends and I will be ripping it back out to re-knit because, uh, I just think that that will be better for her. I have so much stuff everywhere. I don't have a place to set anything. It's awful. <laughs> okay. So my next work in progress is my first, um, cast on for summer sock camp. It was this, this next one. And then that one I showed you, these are my first pairs and I've already finished one and look at this. Oh my goodness. I showed this yarn the last time. This is roller skating rink by stitching with yarn and the black. Yeah. The black that I talked about, it's hard. I, I don't know what you're like, what you're seeing versus what I'm seeing, but because of the colors, how they move through, you don't really see it that much, but I still love, um, when I look at it, how the black is very muted and not like a super black, black. It's just, oh. I mean, I put on Instagram that this color deserves an applause and it so does like this camera, like the, the picture I'm seeing in the camera, I don't think really is showing it. It's not giving it true justice. Like it's just so beautiful. Like I love this. Like you look at this in person and it's like, yep, that's a roller skating rink. Like I went to those all the time when I was a kid and this, this is it. That's the carpet. That's the, <laughs> the color schemes. You name it. This is just so perfect for that. So these are for me, of course. And this was a 50 gram skein. So I finished this one and I've started on the second one. I'm on the heel flap right now. And I actually have this in a new bag that I released in my shop um, last week. No, the week before. So it's been two weeks now since I did this shop update. But these are my part of my summer collection that I made. This is a needle cozy to match. <laughs> but it's this cute gray s'mores fabric. And I don't have any of these left. We'll talk shop news at the end. But um, there was a very limited supply. So I'm sorry if you missed that. And this beautiful green polka dot. And I had a few of these, I think I actually have one of these left needle cozies in this print, but I've started the heel flap. So we're working away on that. And, um, yeah, so there's that. I am very excited to have this done and, and to wear, um, and I wanted to show this because when the, when she released the logo, when the crazy sock lady released the logo and like all of the nineties stuff. And that's, you know, kind of what people talked about. I didn't even think about this, uh, accessory, like having it until I started gathering all of my stuff in like one basket. And I was like, well, this is just perfect for all of this nineties neon yarn. This is a yarn cozy, a neon pink one that I made a couple of years ago that I sold. I sold some, so I was like, well, this is just perfect. And it fits my 50 gram skeins perfectly because it's slightly smaller than the ones I make for 100 gram skeins. Yeah, so there's that. I love this so much. Oh, how cute is that? <laughs> okay. So my next work in progress that I want to show you um, is a quick update on my hat. So if you recall, I talked about my Musselberg hat that I made, putting the needles back in um, and frogging it and, and re-knitting it. 
Well, I completely frogged it and restarted. <laughs> so I've gotten past the uh, increases for this and I did buy some uh, eight inch double pointed needles that I'm going to try out for this um, to see if I have an easier time with it as far as tension and all that kind of stuff and maybe um, it just giving a better look for what I'm wanting. Holding this in the Gilmore Girls bag that I made last year for the Knit People Knit Cow, hosted by Leah Loves to Knit. And I, I, I still love this so much. Mm, it was just so good. Next is a new project that I started. So <clears throat> I, I think I've talked about this before with my cotton yarn, trying to figure out what to do with it, dishcloth knitting or whatever. And any of the ones that I've done, especially with worsted weight yarn, I just have not loved. A lot of them have been gifted. I don't know if those people loved them or not. Um, but I just don't love them. So I don't know why I thought of this one day, but I was like, let me pull out some of the cotton yarn that I have and do a little experiment. So I pulled out this color. This is a super soft 100% cotton yarn. This is the Knit and Crochet brand from Joann's. I bought this last year, I think, and it is soft. It is 100% it is cotton, but it is like a soft cotton. So I decided to do a, some Tunisian crochet, or as um, if you watch any British or UK makers on YouTube, they call it Tunisian, and I love that. <laughs> like whenever I think Tunisian, like in my mind, I always say Tunisian because it just sounds better to me. <laughs> so I work, I'm working on this. And if you don't know anything about Tunisian crochet, it does curl. And, and when you like wet it or you might have to block it if this bothers you or when you wash it, it should be fine. But this is, this is the size of some unpaper towels I made for our kitchen with some leftover flannel fabric and um, some old towels years ago. So my intention is if I like these um, to make them to either add to that collection or kind of replace them as those kind of wear out because obviously replacing all of them that we have will take me a while this way. But um, this is just an old Tunisian crochet hook. I've had this pff, probably since I was a kid. I used to kind of do this when I was younger. Um, but this is a five millimeter Tunisian straight crochet hook. And I love this fabric. This is just the regular Tunisian simple stitch and I love the woven fabric that it makes. Here's the back. Kind of looks like pearl stitches if you've never seen this before. Um, but it's a nice woven fabric that has almost no stretch. So like with the garter stitch washcloths that people make, whether they're knit from the bottom up or corner to corner, I find those tend to stretch just because garter stitch is stretchy. Um, and that's not really what I'm looking for for this, especially because we use these to um, either wash dishes, clean up spills, wipe the counter, whatever. I didn't want something with a lot of stretch. So my intention is to knit this to the same length as those on paper towels I made. And I'm going to add a border just to help it lay a little nicer and just to, you know, look a little better. So that's my plan. Oh my gosh. I'm halfway, you know, this is like, you know, midway through the episode and realized I didn't plug my microphone in. <laughs> so if the audio is mm, up to this point, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Where was I? Yes, this is, um, worsted weight cotton yarn, hundred percent cotton. Um, and if I, this is not bothering my arm. I've talked about that multiple times. This forces you to go a little slower, or at least it does for me, just because of the way Tunisian crochet is done. So it's not aggravating and the, the movements are a little different. So it's not aggravating my forearm. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the way this is turning out. It's easy to execute if you've never crocheted before this might be the way to go to try it out because the, I feel like it's easier to execute than other crochet projects. Maybe that's just me. Um, 
what else do I want to say about this? Um, for this size, I cast on, cast on, I chained 20. And yeah, that was, that was that. So I will show this to you once it's finished. I'm just kind of picking it up and working on it here and there uh, and to see how this goes. And I have a bunch of different kinds of cotton. I've got some Knit Picks Dishy. I've got some Bernat Handicrafter cotton. I've got some more stiff cotton, which the Bernat is stiffer. So I don't know that I would like it for this. I will say for this, um, I think this yarn recommends a five and a half millimeter. If you're wanting, just try it out. It's easy to rip it out. But for me, I started out with a six millimeter crochet hook and it was way too loose and not what I was going for. So definitely you might want to go down a needle size or a crochet hook size for this um, to get a nice tight woven fabric. Uh, my intention with this is if I like this process, if I like the way it turns out, I might want to do more Tunisian crochet. So I've been looking at interchangeable sets and interchangeable sets. They look just like the knitting needle sets. They've got the cord with a stopper on the end and your crochet hook is like, it's either, you know, there's some that are six, five, eight, whatever size. And then you can put on an inter interchangeable cord so you can do longer things like blankets and stuff. So those are kind of pricey and I haven't really found one that I like yet. Most of them are made from wood and I do not care for wooden um, needles or hooks. I just don't like them. So I'm still on the hunt for, uh, an interchangeable set that I might want to buy. If you have suggestions, if you're a Tunisian crocheter, put those down below. Okay. Oh, in the, in the same, before I get into the new project I talked about, sort of new. Um, I started a different kind of dishcloth. Um, I bought a new yarn that I saw at Joann's. You know, like I need to add more yarn to my collection. <laughs> this is a fingering weight cotton yarn from them. It's organic. Not that that really matters to me, but <laughs> uh, organic cotton yarn. Um, and it is a fingering weight. It is, as you can see, very thin. And I started a dishcloth with, from a book, and this is, an, uh, you can't really see the pattern because of this color, but this is a broken basket weave pattern. And my, it's so thin because I was thinking of doing the same thing as the, uh, the Tunisian crochet one, but I'm not loving it. Um, I don't know if it's the yarn choice, but it's feeling very, uh, I don't know if you can you can maybe see, yeah, it's kind of loose and this probably isn't the best yarn color choice for this pattern, or maybe it's the needle size, whatever. But I did buy a smaller Tunisian crochet hook, a, a long one for this yarn, because I think this, like a thin, a thin yarn like this in that woven Tunisian crochet would be amazing. So I'm going to try that out and I will report back. So this will get frogged, but I'm still going to use the yarn um, for this and see what I think to see if the smaller needle in Tunisian crochet uh, doesn't aggravate my injury either. And if it doesn't, amazing because um, this, this would probably make a ton. There's, there's a ton of yarn in here. There are 5.3 ounces, 150 grams. There's a lot. <laughs> in here that you could use to make that. And this was like 10 bucks. So if you're looking for some fingering weight cotton yarn, they have a ton of colors. They have this beautiful red color that I wanted, but I thought I would try this out first. And I mean, you could use it to make like summer tank tops, dishcloths if you want fingering weight dishcloths or whatever. I know, um, uh, I, and I got this idea from Back, Back Porch Fiber Co. She's doing a dishcloth year long make along. And so I thought I would try this out for that. And she's using Hobie yarn. I think that's how you pronounce it. Everybody does it, pronounces it different, but uh, she's using Hobie yarn, which is super affordable, but it also comes, I think from Denmark. So, um, you know, if you wanna get free shipping, I don't know how much the shipping is, but I figured I would try this first before I maybe dove into that yarn. And they sell only 50 grams gains. So 
even though it's affordable, you it might end up paying the same price for this as you do for the same amount of those, if that makes sense. So super affordable, use a coupon. Okay, on to my crochet hexi blanket. Two things for this. I did start a, a new flower for the fingering weight one, so I'll show you what I have so far. So here's the new flower with this pretty yellow yarn. This is just another mini I had in my stash. So there's that one. And I did, I wanted to show you this because this is something I would recommend. I typed out the pattern. I basically copied and pasted it from the website that I got it from. And so that I didn't have to, if I forgot like <laughs> how to do it, um, I would have it in the bag and not have to go back and find the website if I forgot where I put it on a bookmark or whatever. So I printed it out. You can't see that, but I laminated it. That's what I wanted to show. I have a laminator, so I laminated it and it fits perfectly in my bag right there. Um, and I don't have to worry. And I had it just not laminated and I was worried that it was going to get like the, the ink would rub off or whatever from folding it up. And so I just did it this way. Okay. So there's that flower. So, all right. So my new one, I changed my mind from last time. I talked about how I started a DK one. Didn't like how big the hexes were, but then I wound up changing my mind back. <laughs> Went ahead and made a full DK flower. So here it is. Look how huge this is. I will give you a size reference because it is, this is just fingering held double. Look at the size difference <laughs> in these. Look at that. Holy cow. Uh, so this blanket will obviously work up like whatever size I want it to be in the end. This will be finished much quicker. So this was a 50 gram uh, leftover. Actually, it was 65 grams that I had leftover. I weighed it uh, from Leap of Faith Yarns from the Gilmore Girls Cal from last fall. This was called Harvest and so beautiful. So I have a pair of socks with this and... I, I love the way this turned out. I think this will be so beautiful. And I can actually, oh, I don't know if you saw it in the bag. It's caught. I actually weighed this out. This was the leftovers. I have enough to make a fingering weight hexi. So I will have this color in both blankets. So I'm very excited about that. And when I talked about the 50 gram skeins from before, um, you know, having, I only use half for my socks or just under half. And then I have 50 left over. Some of them I might want to make gift socks out of for uh, a friend, but some of them I'm thinking, eh, you know, maybe I don't want to do that. This, these six hexes used roughly 45 grams. So this will be perfect to use up half skeins of yarn. Um, that I've just kind of had for a while or, you know, whether I made socks for me or someone else, or, you know, you want to combine a couple different colors. If you have like 35 and then you've got a 20 gram mini or 25 and 25 or whatever. And you, you know, this is, this is going to be perfect for that. I'm very excited. Uh, and normally my shorty socks take 45 grams. This takes 45 grams do the math there, I will have 10 grams left, a 10 gram scrap leftover, which is perfect because I have plans to, uh, start a fingering weight jelly roll in December. I have a bunch of scraps left over. I've talked about this before, but that's my plan is to start, you know, do kind of my own advent put, you know, from my scrap bags, do my own mystery advent with my scraps and, um, this, this would be perfect to add to that. And that could be something I could do each year or whenever I wanted. And I will be able to incorporate that into three different blankets and socks for me or someone else. <laughs> so it's just a way to use up all of the scraps, um, and all of the yarn. Cause that's kind of my goal from here on out is just to find ways to incorporate all of the bits and pieces and not really just have them sit around. So I'm very excited about that. I crocheted this up with a G plus, a, 
hold on, hold on, one second. <laughs> Here's the hook I used. Uh, I think, it doesn't say on here the millimeter, I think this is a 4.25 or 4.5, but I'm using a Furls from my collection. This is a Furls Odyssey crochet hook. Uh, sadly, they don't sell these anymore. They don't make these particular hooks. They make an all metal one now, um, which I did not know they weren't going to make these anymore. And that made me really sad because they had some pretty colors that I wanted. These are very expensive, by the way. Furls crochet hooks are not cheap. They're very heavy. Um, and they are with an ergonomic handle, as you can see. So these are nice in the hand. And so I did this and I was not bothered. So, but I also, to go along with that, I also did get, um, kind of to go with that. <laughs> I did get, uh, this, uh, arm brace for tennis elbow because I suspect with where my pain is, that's what I have is tennis elbow or what I'm calling crafter's elbow. <laughs> um, so this has this little uh, part that presses on this because right here's where the pain is. So it sits right here and it puts pressure on this muscle and tendon to alleviate tension. And so far when I only wear this when I crochet, so far it's working. I also have, which I didn't show this, but I bought one of these. <laughs> this thing you might have seen all over social media. This is the Valeri pillow and you can hook it. It hooks in the back and it's just, it helps prop up your elbows. If you're playing video games, reading, looking at your phone, crafting, knitting, crocheting, whatever, it just kind of props your elbows up so you're stuff is more aligned with your face. So it helps your neck. It helps your uh, back, you know, uh, all that kind of stuff. So highly recommend that if you have pain from crafting, it was about $80. It took a little bit to get in, but I think it was worth it just because I'm not looking down and straining my neck all the time. Um, you know, cause we're all in that age of looking down at our phones, looking down at our tablets, you know, instead of looking up and having good posture, so just trying to alleviate some of those symptoms. I'm wearing, I'm wearing that. I wanted to update you guys on that. I am doing those things to kind of alleviate any of the pain from crocheting so that I can continue with these blankets. So far, so good. Uh, hopefully it stays that way. <laughs> um, we'll, we have a, just a tiny bit of mail that I wanted to show you, which, you know, most of it's mail with a purpose. Um, I decided what color I wanted to go with for my crochet hexi blankets for the background color. And I bought these from Kimber's Cozy Creations. This is the, I bought one in fingering, one in DK, cause I wasn't sure if I was gonna go through with the DK blanket or not. So I figured I would just buy one of each. And you know, it's a neutral color. I can use it for anything. So this color is actually um, called Pop-Tart Crust. And it is the coordinating skein that, I'd, I should grab it, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, this is also from the Gilmore Girls cow. She dyed up a sock set um, called Pop Tart Crust, and it was like a pink with speckles on it. And this was the color, and this is very neutral. There's no undertones or speckling or anything. So this is what I wanted. So I think this will be a nice neutral color for the hexes for the background. So now I have one of each to try out and you know, she dyed these up for me uh, on, a, on a special order. So if you're wanting these, just contact her and she can do a special um, made to dye or dyed to order. Yeah, dyed to order for this color. She also has another color. I think it's called Treasure, but it's got a lot of, she said it has a lot more pink uh, in it, like pink undertones. And I wasn't really looking for that. So I decided to go with this. So Pop-Tart Crust. So I got those in the mail and then my friend Lauren of Granite State Yarns, she totally got me <laughs> with this color. She has two one of a kind skeins that she dyed up in. I like, I saw those right after they posted. I was like, oh my gosh, there's only two of them. I have to grab one. Um, and this is the color way. I'm trying to figure out the best way to show this. Um, this is, she called it raspberry mocha. Look at that. 
Oh, I love this. Yeah, I had to have this. So I was one of the lucky ones that got this skein of yarn. And this will definitely be like a Valentine's cast on later this year because this just feels very Valentine's to me. So that's all I have for mail. So now I want to show you what's in my summer sock camp basket. So I'm still, I, I have two baskets technically, but uh, I'm still using this basket. This still has um, the yarns from April and May that I didn't knit. There's three of them, but I also have these ready to go. This is rainbow road from granite state yarns that I showed. And this was from last year, which this will be my next cast on when those other ones are done because I did roller skating rink. Now I'm doing roller blading from Daisy stitch co. And I thought those that would just be kind of perfect to go together. But this is from her Barbie collection, which she did last year when the Barbie movie was released, which spoiler alert, I have not seen that. <laughs> I feel like there's so many clips online. I don't actually need to see it. Who knows? Maybe one day I'll see it. All right. My summer sock camp basket. So here, here it is. This is the goal, which I don't think I'll reach this summer, but let's just be real. But these are the ones that I pulled that I think I want to knit with. So real quick, I have the ones I showed you from last time. I won't go over those again, but I also put in this legacy fiber arts one. This is Skittles, which I thought was just kind of perfect for this brightly colored theme. So we have Skittles on a 50 gram. I have, um, some watermelon themed ones. This was watermelon from Mama Just Knits that I got last year that I haven't knit up yet. So that's definitely going to get cast on as well as this one, which I've been dying to cast on since I got it. Uh, this is Sweet Liberty from Yarnable. And this was one of her perfectly imperfect sets. So don't be afraid to buy those. Um, so far, I've only found that there was a few threads and they were towards the end that were kind of like uh, freight or whatever. No big deal. <clears throat> and then I pulled some older skeins from 2023 and before that I thought would go perfectly with the theme. So we have from Freckled Whimsy, we have the uh, yarn of the month from April 2023 called Confetti. So I thought that one went pretty well with kind of the themed yarn. Not that you have to do the brightly colored stuff. You can knit whatever you want to. Um, I just went and pulled a bunch of stuff that I thought might go. And then this was from July, uh, yarn of the month from 2023 called sunshine and snow cones. So I thought that would be a nice color as well. And then I pulled an even older skein, which I got when I went to the K Kentucky sheep and fiber festival. Was that 2022? Yeah. This is from Froggit yarns and this is called sun kissed. So I just pulled that because I'm like sun kissed. It's pink. I thought that was a perfect summer color. So those are my yarns for this year that I pulled. And um, I have a bunch of bags in here too. Some needle cozies just to kind of go with everything. And um, yeah. Oh, such a long episode. <laughs> um, okay. So I shop news. I only have a few of the items left that I did release. I think I have three of these bags left. Um, this print, this camping print, I had this camping print and some s'mores ones, but the s'mores ones I had less of, so they sold out a lot quicker. So this is my, my snap bag. Uh, I had to put a different handle on mine because I ran out of the main fabric. I used this for them for this, uh, snap version or no, they were drawstring. I made myself a snap. The ones for sale are drawstring. Um, but yeah, they have that same green polka dot fabric, but yes, you get these, it's got these cute little mugs and campers. I just, I love this. So, um, there's a couple of those left. There is a needle cozy that goes with this. I think there are a couple left in this print and a couple left in that gray s'mores one I showed earlier. And then hopefully later in the summer, I, like I said, I'm cutting up fabric, making more, um, more collections to come out, some different ones. 
that's oh that's that's another thing i wanted to address really quick because i've had a few probably new people ask me if message me on instagram about stuff selling out that they wanted they liked the print if i was going to make more most of you probably know this if you've been here a while but if you're new um i generally don't make a second run of a print just because i get bored <laughs> i get bored sewing it and i just buy a little bit of the fabric however much i feel like buying and then i make it um and that's it. So if you like the print, you want to buy it the first go around because there's probably not going to be a second run of it unless I get an overwhelming amount of people that are like, yes, I want this. Then maybe I would consider doing a pre-order. But currently in the you know current state of things in our house and personal uh, life <laughs> with work, uh, that's probably not going to happen. So I'm just making ready to ship at the moment. It's just what's easiest for me. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you're new and you don't know much about like my shop and the way that things work for my business. So there's that. Um, and I realized I forgot to update you on a work in progress. My jelly roll blanket. I started because I'm working on this again. I started the next strip. So I wanted to show that. So here's the next strip that I've started with this color. If you're new here, this is my Zebra Yarns Jelly Roll, DK Jelly Roll Blanket. I'm using all of my Zebra Yarns stash for this because I have a lot. <laughs> so I'm just holding a double and uh, knitting it up on a 3.5 millimeter needle. And yeah, so this is the fourth strip. I think this will have like eight strips overall. We'll see. I might have to add more yarns if I don't feel that it's wide enough. I think it'll be plenty long enough, but... Uh, yeah, I've started that so I can I can start working on this again. I obviously I'm still working on my blankets. I've got my crochet hexi blankets. This is my one knit blanket. And I've decided, you know, I don't want to put them away for the summer. I want to keep working on them and keep making that progress uh, throughout the summer just because I don't want to lose steam on them. And I think that I will. I might not work on them every day, but that's kind of the goal is to do a little bit each day along with my socks. So I figure none of the projects are going anywhere. None of the yarns are going any anywhere. If I don't get through all of the yarns that I picked out for summer sock camp, I will be okay with that. It's not a huge deal. I'll just, you know, put them back in the stash or, you know, keep on going. And maybe next year I'll pull them back out. If I don't work on them, it'll be for next year's summer sock camp. <laughs> And we'll just, you know, we'll just, like I said earlier, we're just going with the flow around here because that's all you can do. Um, I already talked about life stuff, the bathroom. I was sick. <laughs> it's been a crazy couple weeks. Um, so we're just, we're just surviving and thriving and, you know, waiting for the weather to warm up around here to a good temperature where we can swim in our pool. We've opened it. We've cleaned it. We have yet to get in it. So that's kind of the last bit of life stuff. Um, and then one other thing I wanted to show you. Um, I don't know if I've talked about this this year. I don't think I have. But I am doing the Bible recap this year. It's kind of a goal I've had for myself the last couple of years. And I've just, I fall off the wagon um, about a quarter of the way through the year. I just, I haven't stuck with it. And I just get behind. And then in my mind, I'm so behind that it's like, what's the point? <laughs> so I've been trying to keep up with it this year and I've been doing pretty good. So I had printed this off last year. This is the plan. So I printed it front and back. So this is, you know, what you read each day to get through the Bible in a year. However, what I did this year was I have been using a new planner. I think I showed this. This is a Hobonichi Weeks. And um, I just, you know, just, you know, playing around with ways to use this. And this is one of the ways that I've been super consistent. Um, I've been writing in, like I split the days or here. And then on this side, I just write what my Bible reading should be for that day. And then I just check it off as I go through instead of, I mean, I could just check it off of this, but this just shows me in my planner what week I'm in um, and what I should be reading for that day. 
and it's helped me be a lot more consistent. I have fallen behind here and there uh, on a couple of weeks or days, but I just play catch up and just go back to those weeks and just read them and move along. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you in case that's an idea that you might find helpful if that's something that you're doing as well. And I think that's going to be it for the day. That's all I have to share with you. That was a lot. We're almost in an hour. So um, I will <laughs> stop rambling and get off of here. If you've stuck around for this long, thank you so much. I appreciate you watching all the way through. Uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm really hoping to hit a thousand subscribers this year and we're almost there. We're a couple hundred away, but you know, slowly but surely we're going to get there. And that's going to be it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.